Among the fifth-generation projects, the SUS-57 stands out for several reasons. It combines technologies and capabilities that its foreign competitors lack. Many of the fighter's features are unparalleled. Essentially, it represents a new type of aircraft. Entering service in December 2020, the Russian fifth-generation Su-57 fighter is not yet operational at squadron scale. But it is expected that by the end of the current state armament program in 2027, there will be three full units in service. A successor to the MiG-1.42 program, canceled after the Soviet Union's collapse, the Su-57 is a heavy stealth aircraft designed to be the backbone of Russia's fleet and, possibly, of key military partners like Algeria and Vietnam. Globally, there are only three post-fourth-generation fighters, the Su-57, China's J-20, and America's F-35. While foreign designs are primarily geared toward either air combat or air raids, the Russian fighter appears more balanced and lacks a distinct specialization. The Su-57 stands out among fifth-generation projects for a number of reasons. It integrates technologies and capabilities that its foreign competitors lack. Essentially, it is a different type of aircraft. However, due to delays in the program, this aircraft will likely have to compete not only with the F-35, but also with the dominance of sixth-generation American and Chinese fighters currently under development. Therefore, more sixth-generation technologies are being tested for future integration into the Su-57's airframe. Though not yet fully realized, many of the fighters' existing features are truly exceptional, as they have no equal. Let us discuss seven of the most notable ones. Most fighters, including all fifth-generation competitors, have just one radar. However, the Su-57 is equipped with six radars embedded in its airframe, offering a significant advantage in situational awareness. The use of multiple radars first appeared in its predecessor, the 4 generation Su-35, which entered service in 2014. In addition to the passive Urbis-E radar in the nose, the Su-35 was equipped with two L-band radars in the wing routes. This gave it superior electronic warfare capabilities and better detection of stealth targets. The six radars on the Su-57 not only allow it to track 60 targets simultaneously, an unrivaled level, but also work across different wavelength bands, optimizing the aircraft for electronic warfare and long-range detection of low observable targets. Radars are distributed throughout the airframe, enabling target detection from the rear and sides. This is an evolution of the Su-35 with a focus on broader detection angles. While modern fighters increasingly rely on data sharing with support systems and Russia's ability to provide its aircraft with advanced network-centric capabilities comparable to China or the US remains uncertain, the fighter's sensors still play a central role in combat. As a result, the Su-57 sensor suite will likely give it a powerful advantage over its rivals. The Su-57's primary air-to-air -air armament is the K-77M missile, a successor to the R-77 currently deployed on Russia's fourth-generation fighters. The K-77M has a significantly extended range of 200 km, reduced tail fins for internal bay launches, and a nose-mounted ESA radar, a rarity worldwide. The K-77M is designed to strike small, maneuverable targets with its ESA-equipped guidance system. According to Russia's RT news outlet, the ASA system consists of conical cells under a radar-transparent nose cap, each cell receiving part of the signal and combining them into a digital mosaic after processing. This allows the K-77M to respond instantly to sharp target maneuvers, making interception almost inevitable. This ensures that enemy fighters cannot escape the missile's field of view and gives the Su-57 perhaps the highest guaranteed strike range. Previously, the Russian Air Force was reluctant to equip its latest fighters with advanced air-to-air -air missiles due to budget constraints, even the Su-35 often carries older R-27 missiles without active radar guidance. However, the K more than 1,500 kilometers. The emphasis on range comes after the end of the Cold War when Russia's air force was drastically reduced in size. This allows the remaining units to cover the country's vast airspace. The loss of foreign military bases, including in Eastern Europe and Vietnam, made range even more critical. Russian fighters can now project power from bases within the country. This is especially relevant 
given the limited air refueling capabilities of the Russian Air Force. The Su-57's long range allows it to strike targets not only in Europe, but also deep into the Atlantic, from bases in Western Russia or from more remote bases that may be better protected from potential Western attacks. This enables the fighters to cover much of the Pacific theater and support the Pacific fleet, with Japan, Taiwan, and Korea all within range. With Russia lacking a carrier fleet, this feature becomes even more significant. It is expected that the long range will be highly valued by potential export clients like Algeria and India, who also have large land territories and maritime domains. One of the new, relatively underreported features of the Su-57 is its directed infrared countermeasure system. It uses turrets capable of firing laser beams to blind incoming missiles after detection. These turrets, unique to the Su-57, are located both behind and underneath the cockpit. Russian forces previously used a similar but less compact system on large helicopters. Laser beams are particularly effective against infrared-guided missiles, making the Su-57 more resistant to short-range attacks from enemy fighters equipped with such missiles as the US AM-9X or the British AM-132. Man Portable Air Defense Systems, MANPADS, which have been widely used against Russian air forces in Ukraine and Syria, also employ infrared guidance. Therefore, the laser defense system will allow the Su-57 to provide close air support far more effectively than other Russian aircraft, complementing the fighter's stealth, reduced radar cross-section, and low infrared signature. Russian aircraft have led the world in maneuverability since 1982 with the introduction of the MiG-29 fighter. The heavier Su-27 followed three years later. Building on this success, the Su-27M and Su-37, developed in the 1990s, achieved extreme maneuverability due to thrust vectoring engines, though they were not mass-produced due to budget constraints. The Su-30MKI, developed for India and entering service in 2002, was the first mass-produced fighter with thrust vectoring engines. Twelve years later, the Su-35 appeared with even more powerful AL-41 engines and a 3D thrust vector. The Su-57 has gone even further, featuring an airframe with superior thrust-to-weight ratio, thanks to the Saturn 30 engines, and an even more agile airframe due to its structural design. This allows the aircraft to evade missile attacks at high speed and achieve optimal positioning in low-speed air combat. Combined with the ability to blind infrared-guided missiles at close range, the Su-57 becomes especially dangerous in combat, even without engaging targets beyond visual range. Since the 1980s, Russian fighters have developed the ability to operate with minimal maintenance and from poorly prepared makeshift airfields. This was perhaps best embodied in the MiG-29 and Yak-41 fighters, which could take off from unprepared runways, unlike many other fighters, particularly those from the West. The Su-57 significantly improves the takeoff and landing performance of its predecessors and can take off with a minimal run. Potentially, it could even be adapted for naval operations with minimal modification. In particular, the fighter uses dirt deflectors, reinforced landing gear, and large tires, and it was designed for deployment from unprepared airfields that even lighter Western fighters could barely use. This capability is especially valuable as Major Power's ability to strike enemy airbases with large-scale attacks is expected to increase over time. A vivid example is the U.S. development of the AGM-183A hypersonic missile, which poses a serious threat to Russian airfields in the early stages of a war. After the introduction of the Mach-10 KH-47M2 ballistic missile in late 2017, a miniature version was announced in late 2018 to be integrated into the Su-57, making it the only fighter jet in the world capable of delivering hypersonic ballistic missile strikes. The missile is considered ideal for anti-ship missions and precision strikes on command centers, logistics hubs, airfields, and other important targets deep behind enemy lines. Its high maneuverability, precision, and speed make it extremely difficult to intercept, and it can neutralize most warships with a single precision hit due to the kinetic energy of the impact. It remains unclear whether the miniature version will retain its 2,000 km range and be able to carry nuclear warheads. The Su-57's long range and stealth 
combined with this weapon, could make it a strike platform with virtually no equivalents. Integrating the missile into the fighter is an attempt to leverage a key area of Russian technological leadership, hypersonic weapons. This would enhance the aircraft's overall capabilities and partially offset its limitations in other areas. Since the Su-57 is designed for wide deployment as a frontline fighter, with over 200 units expected to be operational by the late 2030s, its capability to launch ballistic missile strikes poses a significant concern for potential adversaries. A single squadron equipped for strike missions could cause substantial damage. If the missile is exported, it would likely greatly increase the Su-57's appeal, especially its anti-ship capabilities, which could be of particular interest to the Russian Navy, currently relying on Su-24 and Su-30 SM fighters for naval strike missions. Now, do you think Su-57 is the most battle-tested fifth-generation fighter aircraft in the world? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Please also take our memberships to encourage us.